What it do, man? It's T.O. Double. This is the 13th episode of the M. Cray Podcast, and I'm led to call this episode God the Quarterback. God the Quarterback. Um, I want to cite some things about God that you may not know um, that may help you kind of better connect with him and understand how to operate and um, co-labor with God. So God gave you the Bible. And the reason he gave you the Bible is because the Bible is as if it were the playbook. Now, what I mean by playbook is in the NFL, in football, you know, before they play any games, they go over what's called the plays. And what the plays are, they're basically the plans that the coach teaches the team before they actually get out there and face the opponent. You see what I'm saying? And the more versed you are on the playbook, um, you you heighten your chances of success because that playbook is designed to bring you success. But there are a couple of things that have to be um, utilized in order for you to um, have success um, with the playbook. Um, one of those things is faith. So God is the quarterback. I want you to imagine God has the ball. God has the ball and he's looking toward you to, you know, follow the play. You see what I'm saying? The Bible, it, it shows you how God is and um, it shows you the patterns of God and it shows you the characteristics of God. And the reason that's significant, the reason that's so significant is because um, if you can learn the patterns of God and you can learn how God is, um, you can work with God. Now, the thing about God is this. The Bible teaches that God is immutable, which means he does not change. We're used to things changing. You know, people don't dress the same way today that they did in 1960. You know, you go up to 1970, the style changes. 1980s, it changes. Even in the 90s, changes. But the Bible teaches that God stays the same. So God, um, when he puts something in his word, or you read a story about God, or you see the way that God handles business in the Bible, it's not going to go out of style like clothes and technology because God does not change. And the reason why God does not change is because he was right the first time. You see what I'm saying? See, people change um, a lot of times because they're either growing or trying to get better or they're trying to, um, they call it um, experimentation. You know, you start off, it's wrong and you, you work until you get it right. But what if you're God? And what if you are right the first time well guess what that's the bible god doesn't need to write um another bible and the reason why he doesn't have to write another bible is because the bible that you have reflects what he's gonna do today he's whatever he did two thousand years ago did you know that's exactly what he's gonna do today whatever he was against two thousand years ago 3,000 years ago. Do you know he didn't change his mind? And that's what he's against today? If the Bible says that, you know, God is against uh, homosexuality, did you know God didn't change his mind about that? That's still the same. If God says he's against uh, sex before marriage, did you know that, that that didn't change? And that that's still the standard? If that Bible says that uh, thou shalt not steal that didn't ever go out of style God is still um, the same he didn't change so that's why he can write one book and it could be relevant for all time now the beauty about a person who is a believer who is a child of God and they have this book from this this being that is unchanging if the being is unchanging and they wrote a book, then that book is reliable. And that's the Bible. 
God has spoken and God has acted. And when he put those actions and those words into a book, and then you sit down with that book and read it, you read the chapters, you study it, you meditate, you ponder it. You say, why did God do that to that person? Why did God destroy this city? Why did God reward this person? And then you start to consume that. And then you start to get understanding. What happens is you start building your relationship with God because now you know how to conduct yourself in a manner that um, will get results. See, if you read the Bible and you begin to learn about God and you conduct yourself in a manner that is um, um, toward God based on the Bible, you're going to see God move. You're going to see him move. You're going to literally see the supernatural hand of God move because you are acting in a way that corresponds with his belief system. That Bible is God's belief system. That's not a man belief system that bible is god's faith and when i say it's god's faith it's what god believes so when you connect your faith with his faith there is a relationship y'all got a relationship because um the bible says how could two walk together unless they agree you can't walk with god if you are in disagreement with god if you disagree with things that God has said is right or wrong or you you find yourself being indifferent with what God has put in that Bible don't expect to have a good relationship with God because when God created everything and when he wrote that Bible he didn't ask your opinion about it he didn't ask nobody's opinion about it God is a king and the Bible is based on the concept of a kingdom not like a democracy the bible is not based on democracy like america in america if you don't like something the people can get together and protest and change the law but not so with god because god is a king and the bible is based on kingdom concepts now i would like to see you try in a kingdom atmosphere I'm talking about a real atmosphere that, to where there's a king I would like to see you try to protest the word of the king that's a good way to get you thrown in the lion's den why? because in a kingdom the, the word of the king is law and it's not up for debate and that's what's wrong with uh, many people is that they think that this bible is up for debate and when you think that you're revealing that you don't understand who God is God is not the president of the United States he's not uh, Joe Biden he ain't Donald Trump he's God and he's a king and the king's word is law and a kingdom operates based off of the king what the king thinks is right how the king feels is what's going to be expressed in that kingdom no matter how the citizens think or feel you see what i'm saying that's why in the bible it talks about good kings and then you had evil kings and the condition of that kingdom was always um it always had a relationship to the condition of the king it always reflected the moral and spiritual um condition of whoever was ruling it because um the kingdoms of a king is always a reflection of the king himself so we're talking about the bible the bible is something that is coming from the kingdom of god and when it's showing you how god acts what god does his power what he esteems important what he esteems as worthless what he uh, deems as um worthy of reward those things are precious because God didn't have to reveal himself to nobody but the Bible is actually a book that's showing you the nature of God something that if he chose not to do you would never know about God if God didn't choose to reveal himself did you know you would never know about him personally 
you wouldn't you wouldn't know his standards now don't get me wrong there are some things that you can know about god just by observing the things he created but god has given you such privilege to peep him out through the bible you can read the story of noah and peep how god is you could peep the story of daniel and see how he's a deliverer you got this stuff that you can peep out about god and his word you know that's why if i can imagine god being offended when people don't read the bible it's just like imagine you you god and you created everything and then you also make a book and you author a book but then people don't read it but they're gonna read barack obama's book and michelle obama book but your bible is 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 collecting dust when he's the creator of the universe by god creating the bible he's giving you an opportunity to have a relationship with him remember how i told you in the last episode the bible is not for your brain your logical calculated thinking because um god is not no big old brain god is a spirit and you got a spirit so when you open up that Bible, God is trying to connect with your spirit. So one of the ways you can get the quickest, one of the quickest ways you can get a relationship with God is spend time in the Bible and, and, and read it correctly. See, people try to read the Bible like it's um, a novel. The Bible is not to be read as a novel. The Bible is Jewish meditation literature. Jewish meditation literature which means it's 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 designed not to just be read like a, a novel it's designed to be meditated and studied even extensively because through that meditation and um, uh, uh, studying you're gonna get God it's kind of like taking an orange peeling the orange and then uh, uh, squeezing the orange but not just squeezing it once you squeezing the orange until you squeezing all the juice out of that orange you see what i'm saying that's how you read the bible um but when people read it like a novel or when you talk to people about the bible and they say oh yeah i read that i read the bible three times like it's something that you just read once and don't read no more that's just like they peeled the orange right but they didn't ever squeeze it because the bible's not just designed to be read once that you're going to be coming to that Bible for the rest of your life. And even after you read something a hundred times, you still going to find something new every time. Because the word says that the scriptures, the word of God is a living word. That word is alive. It's not like any other book. This Bible is living. You go ask people, you go ask your grandma who read her Bible. Grandma, when you read that Bible, do you see something different every time, even though it's the same thing you read? And she say, she gonna say, yeah. Why? Because God is in the word, his spirit. The word of God has the spirit of God on it. So, uh, and that's what you really want that word because it has that spirit. And that spirit is what you need to um, do the things you need to do uh, to resolve a lot of your life issues. You need that spirit. It's not so much that word, you know, the black and white print. You need that spirit that's that's on the word. Because once you get that spirit, you're going to know the plays. And when it's time for God to throw you the ball, that ball representing your success, you're going to be able to catch it because you know the play. That play is going to tell you, go over here by faith. Make a left, and make a right. And God's going to throw it to you. But you got to know the plays, man. I'm almost at my 15 minute mark. So T-O-double MK podcast until next time. I'm saying peace out.